Hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you what, y'all enjoy that. That boy would be nothing without me. I'm serious. He wouldn't even exist without me. I just now knock my, um, my, my... Well, let's see if we can find somewhere to put this goofy thing. Amen. God's good anyway, even though it, I tear everything up and break stuff. And Let's see. Put it right there. You stay there and don't you fall out. Don't, don't let me forget if I get to jumping up and down doing cartwheels that my microphone packs in my pocket. I don't want it falling out this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles this morning, Isaiah chapter 35 and verse number 8. I love the Lord this morning. I'm going to tell you what, while you're finding it real quick there, uh, this Bible study in the book of Philippians is one y'all really don't want to miss. It's some good stuff. God's, God's got some word that's coming forth in, in, out of Philippians there. But uh, you ought to make some time on Tuesday nights to be up here to bless your soul. Isaiah 35 and 8. And in a highway shall be there. And a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Everybody say holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the, uh, though fools shall not err therein. Okay. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me this morning. Anoint it. Help us in their word. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. I want to share some stuff with you this morning. Hebrews chapter number 12. And Sister Martina. Oh, it is right there. Okay, never mind. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Follow peace. Everybody say peace. And everybody put your two fingers up and goes, Peace, man. No. <laughs> Follow peace. I talked to an elder friend of mine, a, a pastor, and, um, and, and, and we were discussing this scripture. And everybody loves, especially some of these old time, and I'm not against them, they're good friends of mine, okay? But they like that the second part of the scripture. Without holiness... Shall no man, which no man shall see the Lord. But they forget that first part of peace. Peace is important part of holiness. We're not going to be able to yeehaw with God when we are not in a peaceful dispensation. Dispensation, I can't talk. Of a decent, peaceful attitude. If we have violence in our mind, that is unholiness. If we have bitterness in our spirit, that is unholiness. If we have anger one to another, that is unholiness. Without peace and holiness. Follow peace and with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We've got to remember peace. I'm not going to bypass that because that's important. But when we realize the core of holiness, we realize that peace just kind of takes care of itself. Let me show you a few synonyms to holiness. Sanctity. Sacredness. Blessedness. Inviolable. In other words, not able to be violated. Purity. And sacro... S-A-C-R-O-S-A-N-C-I-T-Y. Sarcosicity, whatever. Sarcosanctity. There you go. That's a, I, I never received an award for spelling or English. And somebody the other day was getting on to me about my Spanish. I said, look, I'm just on a higher level of Spanish than you are. <laughs> Brother Monroe thinks he can speak Spanish, but when he gets to these higher levels, he'll just be able to make words up just like I do. <laughs> <laughs> but needless to say, I can't speak Spanish. I'm do good on English, and it's not very good. I like the definition 
or the way the definition of this word sacrosanctity is described. Extremely sacred or inviolable. Not to be entered or trespassed upon. Above or beyond criticism, change or interference. Holiness means that what is is not inferred upon, is not tread on, is not violated. It does not change. That's what holiness is. Can somebody tell me two things that God cannot do? The first is? The second is? Change. God cannot change. The Word of God over and over again tells us God is holy. You cannot violate God because He is inviolatable. You cannot change God because He's unchangeable. He is the ultimate of holiness. He is perfectly holiness. The Lord has given through the Apostle Paul to the ministry a requirement, the same requirement that was required of the prophets in the Old Testament. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. My job as a pastor is to instruct those that oppose themselves. Your husband's not here this morning yet, so Jess, I can pick on you because he can't beat me up because he don't know anything about it. <laughs> so, Kim, don't you laugh. Your husband's not here. He can pick on you too. <laughs> can I tell you something? Me, you, and everybody else, we are good at opposing what's good in our life. You know, the, the, the guy that, you know, last night decided to get high on shooting his veins up with heroin. He didn't think much about it, but the fact of the matter is he's opposing himself. The, the young person that gets their first job and doesn't learn how to zip their lip because they never had any respect for their parents and they mouth off to their boss, they are opposing themselves. The boss can hire somebody else for $3.95 an hour. So it is incumbent, just like as pastor, it's also upon parent, to instruct those of us that oppose themselves. Holiness is what is right within us. Holiness brings what's in us to greater blessings of God. Holiness is sanctity, purity, cleanliness, an unviolatable spirit that we walk with God with. So it goes, if God, uh, instructing those who oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. I don't know if we all understand this like we should, but I want you to repeat after me if you agree. The devil is a liar. If you believe that, try it again with me. The devil is a liar. The devil does not want you to succeed. He wants you to fall to his devices. I meant to bring it with me. I don't like rats. How many of y'all like rats around your house? How many of y'all put a rat trap in your, under your sink or wherever the rats show up? You don't have to tell me where they are, but if you've never had a rat in your house, you don't understand the rest of us going to talk here, okay? But you put a rat trap out and you go and get a, make a sign and, and you write it in rat language. 
That's almost like my 10th level of Spanish that I'm on. It says, danger, trap below. I mean, when you get a, when you get a bucket of poison or, 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 or whatever, cleaning materials, you look on there, there's a little skull and crossbones that don't drink this. You just want to warn those little rats, don't come over here and eat this. It'll kill you. And if you've ever had a, a possum in your yard that you want to get rid of and you're too scared to reach out there and knock it upside the head with a shovel or a snake or some other kind of something that you're just too ch timid to realize that you're a big, strong person. It's just a little bitty critter that's got to obey you. But you go get a trap and you put all kind of like lights and bells on it so that it doesn't it realize that when you go in here, you're going to die, little possum. Little, little rat, don't you realize it? Be careful of this thing because when you come up here to step on that little lever, smack, you're going to be dead. No. You go put a piece of bread with some molasses on it. My old father-in-law, that dude knew how to catch, catch rats and, and rat traps. I'm going to tell y'all how to do it. Y'all ready? This guy knew what he was doing. So if you've ever got rats, just listen to Brother Dunn right now. I'm going to tell you how to do it. You get you a piece of newspaper. And you cut you a little square of newspaper. And in that newspaper, you put you some cheese, a little peanut butter, a little honey. And then you get you a little string and you tie it up. And you tie it to that little lever on the rat trap. And the rat can smell that through that paper. But because it's tied to it, he'll sit there and fight to get it off. And in just a minute... Yeah. How many of y'all put cheese on there? He, he just knocks it off and runs away. Yeah. Can't do that if you tie it down to it. But what are you trying to do? You're trying to snare the rat because you don't like him. Okay? And you realize that if you put that sign on there and that, hey, rat, danger, you know, a picture of a dead rat. I mean, it's like the Roach Motel. Roaches go in, but they don't come out. There's always this sign that says entrance and exit. Why? You don't want to go around the exit side and look in. You write entrance. So the rat, so the little roach knows which side to go into. The enemy is like that with our life. He does not try to snare you with the truth. This is going to kill you. This, here, here's a cigarette. This cigarette is going to make you cough. It's going to give you emphysema. It's going to take all your money. It's going to make you look old. Here, have a cigarette. Dude, I thank you for telling me about that. Give me three of them. No. He shows you some dude on a horse. Marlboro country. <laughs> and you're only that cool online. So you're like, give me some of that. I'd be cool. <sighs> and you're being trapped. And you're being killed. And the whole time you're paying for it. And then you want all the rest of us to pay for your new lungs. Sorry, did I say something to hit home? No. <laughs> Y'all ought to look at people in the food, in, 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 in the food line and, and say, you know what? You, I, I got no problem. I want to help you buy your groceries. I'm glad you got that grocery card there. But um, you really have money for cigarettes, but you don't have money for food? And then you're going to go get a medical card too because you're going to cough your lungs out? Okay, I'm sorry. Those are just questions that go through my head sometimes. But that's the way it works. You see, the enemy puts you in a trap. And then, and, and, and don't raise your hands that you know somebody in your family maybe that you've been witnessing to and trying to get out of sin and trying to come to a life for living for God. And you know they're in a trap and you keep trying to encourage them. And then they come to you one day to <coughs> pray for me. <laughs> Same thing. We're going to pray for you anyway. Don't, I'm, just, I'm just having a little fun with you. We, uh, you know, it, it's, my, it's our job to do that. 
The whole world's lost. God came to die for the lost world. He didn't come to die for a bunch of saved people. He came to die for a bunch of people that were in sin, that were trapped, that were dying and going to hell. But holiness is something that if we don't live in and we don't and we reject and we push away because our mind or the conditioning of the world around us, Satan has so developed it within us that we fight against it and we fight against what's good and right that God has designed and we fight and we simply snare ourselves into a life of unholiness. Leviticus says this, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for the Lord your God, I am the Lord your God, I the Lord your God am holy. We must be holy. Let me show you what, how holiness helps you. I... I I would like to say I've known this since the beginning of time, and I was given this gift of this knowledge many years ago, but honestly, it just came this morning. <laughs> Thursday or Friday when I was teaching the Bible lesson for the elementary school, and I was studying it on uh, Let My People Go, Moses, I read it, and he went to the burning bush. Here's the burning bush. Or here, burning bush. It's on fire. Don't nobody throw a match up here. It really will burn. And he comes before it, and God says something to him. He says, Take off thy shoes, for the place that thou standest is holy ground. Now, I, I'm, I know y'all are probably smarter than me. Y'all probably were born knowing this stuff, but I have to pray about it. But Brother Ash, I'll just be honest with you. I never understood that until this morning. I never... Why take off your shoes? That don't make no sense. Why take your flip-flops off? Why take off your, your work boots, your steel toe work boots? Why, why take off your, your, your jump boots, your army ranger boots, or whatever you're wearing? Why take them off? I don't get that. The Lord talked to me about that this morning. He said, I made them what they needed to wear in the garden. In the garden, they decided they wanted fig leaves to dress themselves when they realized they were naked. I made them coats. I didn't make them shoes. But as sin moved through life, the Bible says there was basically, you know, things begin to fight against us. Now, if you're going to go out here and run out through the parking lot, run around behind the building, how many of y'all would like to do that with shoes on? Raise your hand. Okay, the rest of you just a bunch of hillbillies. <laughs> Go run through a, what's that, what do y'all call that little thing out there, sheep heads? Goat heads. Goat heads. You know, how many of y'all want to go run through a little field of goat heads with your shoes off? You know, back home, they, co they had them little stickers, they, I forget what they call them, but that, about that long, and there's like eight or ten of them on there, and they grow on a little stem. Oh, man, there is nothing worse than somebody coming up with one of them and just pow, right across your cheek. Oh, my goodness, they hurt. I reaped what I sowed. <laughs> but I don't want to run around through some of you know, uh, them, them, them sand spurs. That's what they call them. Sand spurs back home. I don't want to run through them barefooted. I wear shoes to protect my feet over what is out to get me. Whether it be germs. How many of y'all like to walk through your local neighborhood McDonald's bathroom without no shoes on? You get my point? But when he stepped before God, God said, there is nothing in my realm that will hurt you. And he says, I want to be connected to you without anything between me and you. We need to be connected. You see, God cannot... We, we, things we wear and things that we put on puts a division between us and God. How many of you realize that God made you naked? I'm not, I'm not running for trying to get a, 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 a what they call them, a, a nudist colonies going on. We don't need that going on. That, that's not really, that's not, I don't think that's a good idea. Don't misunderstand what Brother Dunn's saying. But you, you realize that when you were without sin, you were... And God could connect with you. 
And there are things that we build up in our lives that holiness, that connection of God's holiness and our holiness that allows us to work together. Moses stepped into a place of holiness and he was able to get revelation from God like no one else before. How many of you realize that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible? Now, what's your first name? Nathaniel. Huh? Nathaniel. Nathaniel, I know, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, you sit up here. I'm going to pick on you. Okay. How many you, did you think that Moses was really alive whenever they made the Garden of Eden and he wrote all that information down? No. God revealed it to him. You see, holiness gives you a connection to God where He can begin to work into your life. How many of y'all think the enemy wants you to have that holy connection to God? No. He wants you to eat the cheese on the trap. Why? Because it'll get your tail caught. How many of y'all have ever got your tail caught? You've done something you knew you shouldn't have done, and as soon as it snapped over, and you just... Like this guy, whenever he tried to hit her and she broke his arm. <laughs> Got a friend of mine whose daughter just got married. I pity the fool if he ever raises his hand at her because she is a karate expert and would probably beat Bruce Lee to death if she ever had a chance. <laughs> Exodus 19 and 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. We are supposed to be a holy people. I got another scripture in Peter that told us the same thing, and in Revelation it says the same thing. We are a holy people. We are a priest made unto God. God made us kings and priests. And we are supposed to be holy because it gives us a connection. I'm probably going to just bypass all these notes. I got four pages of them, and just let me preach. But. In the Old Testament, the priest, Brother Austin, my priest here, stand up priest. You see, the priest was about like him. And, and I, I, I never have been to your house. I really don't know what you do in your life. But I'm just going to guess, okay? There's probably some stuff that's unholy. Would you guess? I mean, you're a teenager. You're supposed to be. It's kind of, no, I'm just... I'm just. If you were my own son, I wouldn't be picking on you too hard. I'd be right where you live. But the priests were just like that. But the priests were given a holy garment. And a holy, even from the headdress, all the way down. So even though they may have, and I know y'all think badly of him. I think he's a pretty cool guy. But even though y'all may think he's just a rotten, good for nothing thing. There, there's a holy garment that they were put on that took us from what we saw with our eyes unto what was holy unto God. You can be seated now. So we are all priests unto God. God wants, so when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Bible refers to that as a garment that we put on. I read the scripture last week about the man that was in, uh, that went to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and he did not have on the garment, and he was booted out. So that holy garment that the unhealthy and unworthy priest put on changed them. And they were anointed with a holy anointing oil. Type in shadows here. This is a, for an example. The only ones that were allowed to come into the presence of the holy place was the priest. And they were only allowed to go in when they wore the holy garments. And the high priest it was the only one allowed to go into the holiest of holies. And he also had to wear a holy sanctified garment with holy anointing oil and holy smell good. I think it was called Old Spice. <laughs> but he had to have that on. For some of you that are English leather fans, maybe we just call it English leather. That's okay. But you weren't to go in. Because holiness was the only thing that connected you to God. 
That anointing of the Holy Ghost that came upon and through Jesus Christ and it came upon us when we were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost is what gives us that connection to a holy God. You may sit down. Thank the Lord. Praise God. You see, we're wrapped up in sin and God brought us from a sinful life into what He wants into a holy redemption life. He wants us to be blessed and redeemed of God. And He knows that without holiness, we can't connect with Him. That scripture back in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I can't see God if I don't have holiness in my life. John chapter 3 and verse 5, For unless you are born again of water and of spirit, you cannot see or enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said it. This scripture in Hebrews, Paul is expounding upon it. And we must realize that without holiness, holiness comes when we get a Holy Spirit on the inside. There's something on the inside. It's working on the outside. There's a change in me. I'm becoming changed. I'm becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old man is passed away and behold, everything is becoming new. I'm going to begin to put on holiness. Inside. Outside. Every other way so that my connection with God is secure through the power of holiness. Everybody say, I need holiness. Now every time we preach about holiness, the first thing that we run to is uh, how we dressed, how long our hair is, not wearing our jewelry and makeup, etc., etc., etc. That's part of it. We'll get to that. I would be wrong if I don't preach. I probably don't preach it often enough. But too many times, we, the enemy, again, because he's a deceiver, brings up all of this stuff to try to separate you from God. But the man that is hungry for God says, whatever you ask, I'll do. I know when I got the Holy Ghost, I said, God, whatever you want me to do and wherever you want me to go, I'm willing and here I am in Farmington, New Mexico. <laughs> but when you got the Holy Ghost, there was something about that in you. It said, God, whatever it takes. There is people that have sought God and sought God and sought God. And I have stood right there in, in, in this church too, but at other times and other places. And I pray and say, God, that person wants the Holy Ghost. Show me what's preventing them. And it's like, there are things that says, I'll never do that. I want the grace of God. I want the peace of God. I want the forgiveness. But I'll never... Do, ain't nobody ever going to look at me and think I'm a holy roller. I ain't never going to run and shout. I'm never going to throw my hands up. I'm never going to... I, 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 I'm just not going to do that. Hey, Sherlock. You want to know why? There's why. I've seen others get the Holy Ghost... And the old man starts to rise up again. And then they begin to quench the spirit. And that love of God is not as powerful as it once was. Their walk with God is not as close. They, they, they just get cold on God. Why? Because they begin to overshadow and they put shoes between them and God again. Let's go on here. Let's see. Holiness starts with what's true. Holiness starts in here. Now, you come to this church, Sister Savannah, you grew up in this, but I'm going to pick on you anyway. Let's just act like you just walked in here the first day. This is your first day of walking in. I, it's not my job to walk up and, 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 and just, well, you need to do this, you need that. You got that long, pretty hair. Oh, if you don't go get some extensions, your hair's too short. You get to get out of this church. That, that, that's not right. Everybody, that, that's not right. It starts here, and it grows, and it shows. It does come on the outside. Right. 
But it starts on the inside. Too many people have been run off from living for God because the enemy, number one, showed them a, a, a vision of what holiness is and said, well, I, I'll never do that. Well, that's fine. You never do that. And you'll put a wall up and say, God, this is the line I won't cross and you won't cross it either. God, this is as far as you're going to come in my life. When you get to the point you say, God, whatever it takes. You know, I joined the army. I wore the clothes they gave me. I wore them ugly birth control glasses they gave me. <laughs> if you never had some friend of yours go in the army and get them glasses the army gave them, oh my Lord. They told me in the army, says, if we wanted you to have a girlfriend, we'd have gave you one. I got to thinking about my girlfriend back home. Drill sergeant said, don't worry about her. Jody done got your girl and gone. You know, get a job with FedEx. First thing you have, man, you put that shirt on. Look at me. I dare you to do to FedEx what you do to God. Do to your Navy recruiter what you do to God. I'd like to join the Navy, get those benefits of college, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and, and I, I, but I ain't wearing that uniform. Cut my hair? Uh-uh. You mean I got to show up every day? <laughs> Do that next time you go to, uh, get, get, you know, Sister Alyssa looking for a job. If y'all need to know anybody needs a good, good employee, Sister Alyssa wants a good job. She needs to make a lot of money. That's what you're going to work for, right? You're not going to work for the experience. I'm, I'm not here for experience. I want a paycheck. Experience will come with the paycheck. That sounds sound kind of funny. It's backwards. It's not backwards. That's actually, you work for Money. What do you do for a living? I make money. What do you do for a living? I'm a chef. That's probably why you're broke. <laughs> I'm a landscape guy. That's probably why you're broke. If you earn money for a living, you'll do whatever it takes to earn money. What am I? I'm a child of God. You know, if God called me tomorrow... By the way, Lord, my number is 63587. <laughs> and says, Okay, I'm finished with you preaching. Go sit on the pew. Okay. Can I do the back one, the middle one, the front one, where you want me? But uh, yes, Lord. You know, there, there comes, I serve God. I serve Him however He wants me to. I live for Him. You know what? When you, you get blessed when you have that spirit. God, here I am. I'm here, Lord. I serve you, Lord. It opens up a Holy Spirit on the inside that God can begin to commune with and connect with. Be ye holy as I am holy. I'm not violatable. You can't violate me with the things of this world. You can't violate me with the spirits and the conditioning of the things of this world in my mind. I am sold out to Jesus. I'm not going to change. Any change is going to be done. It's going to be you. It ain't going to be me. You know, I, 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 y'all know I like politics. And if I don't like, you don't like my politics, I don't have to like your politics, and we can still like each other. Because when it's all said and done, I'm going to live for God. I... I I'm a child of God that happens to live in America, but I do have my opinions. But it's kind of funny to me. This is just, this, just, this, just funny to me, okay? But I was watching recently with the government shutdown, and Obama was not movable in his position. And the Republicans go up, and they made an offer, and then they moved, the, they moved the boundaries, and they moved the boundaries, and they moved the boundaries. You know who looked like an idiot when it was all over and done with? My people. Dude, if you don't repeal health care, that's just it's my opinion. I, I, I like that idea. You don't have to like it. That's okay. Or the other five people that signed up when you did. But <laughs> I, will, I will say this. All you people complaining about them spending six hundred and something million dollars on the website. I know what that kind of stuff cost. And all these liars out there that says you can do it for, you know, hundred million dollars, they don't know what they're talking about because they don't realize the facilities it actually takes to house that stuff. If you don't believe me, call Walmart and ask them how much they spent on their data center. Billions. So I do know what I'm talking about. 
I will give him grace there. But of the rest of it, no, he didn't need it in the first place where she just wastes, you know. I have, I have the, they can't cancel my health insurance policy because mine's divine. Does it cover cancer? I got a cancer policy. Does it cover depression? Yes, I got a, I got a, a, a mental health policy. Uh, does it cover uh, 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 maternity care? I'm never going to get pregnant. <laughs> My policy meets all of the requirements. <laughs> I got a divine healer. And he is not, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm paying, I, I pay my tithes, I'm offering, I'm faithful, and it's all covered under the blood. Amen. But, uh, and, and so I, it's not, my policy's not going to get canceled. But, you know, when you start allowing yourself to be moving, constantly moving, I don't know, I've never read uh, Donald Trump's book, The Art of the Deal. But the guy that, I've always been a pretty good salesman, but the one that helped me the best to sell was Jack. And he said, when you enter into a negotiation, the first person that speaks loses. Let me help you on this. You go to buy a car, throw out an offer, and shut up. Man, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. If you don't believe me that it works, I know all, uh, uh, none of us in here, are, you know, we, we don't get into all this you know, television watching stuff, but um, watch Pawn Stars on your, on your radio sometime. <laughs> and every time that bald headed dude opens his mouth he takes he, he pays out more and more money I've watched him but if you just zip it get ready to go buy a car I'm dead serious go over there drive into the Mercedes Benz dealership offer a guy a fair price and shut up and as soon as he opens his mouth he's going to start coming down and he's going to keep coming down and if you offer a stupid price, then okay, you've already lost already. But I mean, we're talking realistic. You ready to buy a house? Zip it. Uh, you want two hundred thirty thousand? I'll give you two hundred and ten. <coughs> then look at them. <coughs> See, that's what we need to do to the devil. I'm gonna live for God. Mm -hmm. And the devil start offering you something. And next thing you know, he won't know how to shut up. He just keeps on, keeps on, keeps on, keeps on. But can I tell you something? He's a loser in the beginning. <coughs> Amen? He's already lost. He's already going to hell. He's already. But I don't want to go with him, Sister Penny. I'm drawing a line. I'm not telling God he can't cross that line. I'm drawing a line to the devil. You ain't crossing this line. I am me. I'm unchangeable. I'm going to be holy. I'm going to stand firm. You're not going to move me. You're not going to violate me. You're not going to shake the foundations of my determination. I'm going to live for God. All right, Nabab and Abinahu. I'm going to show you something. There was two old boys. They were the sons of Aaron, high priest kids. These were the future high priest. And there's an interesting thing about them. They go with Moses and the 70 elders. They're part of the 70. They go up on the mountain of God when God speaks to Moses. And the Bible says, they went up with Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. Now, Sister Graham, if you saw God, If you actually saw God, it would, you'd think, it would change everything in your life. I mean, okay, the Lord said, blessed are those that have not seen me but believe. Now, the, he was talking to the disciples, y'all have seen me and you believe. That's great. I mean, if you had seen Jesus pop up out of the tomb after he was crucified and you watched him buried and he comes showing back up, uh, you'd believe, wouldn't you? But just because you're old, but Brother Tim didn't actually get to see that. But he believes without seeing. So here is Nahab and Abihu, and they have actually seen God with their own eyes. And it isn't but a chapter or two later 
that there are in Leviticus, excuse me, it's not in the same book, but it's not time frame wise. It says, And Nahab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer. In other words, that was what they put the fire and the incense in, and they praised the Lord through an attitude, and it was a holy anointing oil that they would burn in their censer before God. It was part of that holiness covering. And like, like, the, like the robes that they had, it was on there, and it was written, Holiness unto the Lord. But you go on to say, it says, and they, uh, and, and they put fire therein, and put incense therein, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which He commanded them not. In other words, it was holiness... When you went and got coals off of the altar and you put the coals from the altar into the censer and you put the holy oil on top of it and that combination of sacrifice and purity created a sweet smelling savor before the Lord. But a fire that had no sacrifice could not smell the way it was supposed to smell. It wasn't holy. You see, there are people that don't have the fire of the Holy Ghost that they can't tell you how to live for God. Everything is weighed on this. How many of y'all believe every word in here is true? Maybe I should do it the other way. If you don't believe this is true, would you raise your hand? That's what I thought. We believe it. Every word in the Bible is true. I believe it. If it tells me that the world is round, I'm not going to agree with all the morons that says it's flat. Now that sounds funny. Because we've actually had astronauts up there get pictures of the earth and we see it's round. But do you realize when everybody else believed it was flat, this book said it was round? But yet, how many people was just dumb? And, 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 and just, just go on with it. Well, the enemy would like to do that with our walk with God. He would like to take the stupidity of our flesh and get us just to go on with it. We've got to stand up against the fact of being an ungodly fire on the inside of us. Something that is out there that we picked up, it sounds good. I caution people all the time, be careful the books you read. I got no problem with you reading some books, but be careful the books you read. What kind of fire is on the inside? What kind of theology do you have? They'll, you know, I've heard people all the time. If I come up to you, I, 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 let, let's get in the natural world. I hear people coming up all the time telling people what kind of things they need to do to their computer. Can I tell you a little secret? You need to talk to a computer expert. That's what I do when I have computer problems. As opposed to somebody that just kind of casually knows something about it. In my day years ago, when I was in the car business, I, I could diagnose car problems just about as fast as you could get them. And trust me, at the Ford dealership where I worked, they had car problems all the time. I could diagnose it. That's what I did. I don't do that anymore. And if my truck were to break down, I take it to somebody that knows what they're doing. I don't want to take it to somebody that don't know how to do it. I don't want to take it to the guy down here that works at Subway and say, Hey, can you fix my truck? He knows how to make bread. The guy at the Dodge dealership may not know how to bake bread. I need to go to the place that knows whenever somebody can't look at you in the eye and stand on the scripture. If they got to tell you these scriptures, well, they don't apply to you. They're not real. That's just for that. You know what? How many gods are there? Three. Oh, you're an idiot. Leave me alone. What's that dude's name with the big smile? This is my Bible. I don't believe a word in it, but it's a Bible. What's his name? Thank you. Joel Osteen. Man, he ruins a good name, Joel. Can I tell you something? He don't even believe in heaven. Why would you believe anything that falls out of his mouth except his false teeth? T.D. Fakes. I, I, man, what... 
What an inspiring preacher he was when he knew the truth. Now he's backslid and turned away and rejected it and said it's not. But the Bible says it. I know, but that's, I don't know. I, I was wrong for many years to baptize in the name of Jesus. I was wrong for many years to believe that here is the Lord our God is one Lord. I believe there's three now. Okay, keep feeding me. No. Holiness unto God causes a sacred place in our heart that I don't want to hear something that does not hold fast to what the Word of God says. The Word of God is true and holiness keeps me connected to the power of God. How many of y'all want the power of God in your life? You want the power of God in your finances. You want the power of God on your children. You need to seek holiness because holiness is a thing that keeps you connected to a holy God. Leviticus 20 and 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore. Okay, what does it mean? We preached the message a couple years ago here about sanctification. Does anybody remember that message? Good, I can preach it tonight and y'all think it's new. Um, sorry. When you take... Brother, can I... I, I see your notepad there. I'll give it right back. Can I borrow it? Now this notepad... He wants to give to God. He can sanctify it unto God. It's just paper. I mean, it sounds silly. I'm just having fun here, okay? But he gives it to God and he says, what is done in this notepad? Now, I know he's got like three or four girls' phone number in here and <laughs> wild Mary over there at the do drop in. But when he says, I'm going to sanctify this to God, what goes on with this notepad? is at that point holy. It becomes connected with God. Whatever He does with this, it is sanctified unto God. The Word of God tells us that whenever they brought the average ordinary gold and they made the, they made a, 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 the ark and they made the candlestick, they had to sanctify it. Why? Because until it was sanctified, it was just like the, all the gold you got in your pocket. It was just gold. But when they sanctified it unto God, it was then holy unto God. And for the rest of time, it was always the holy vessels, the holy things of the house of God. When you are sanctified and blood-bought of Jesus Christ, it's exactly the same. When you are sanctified, give you my all, Lord. You know, the old, the old timers, they used to call it saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. It all works together. There is something that happens in you when you just simply repent. Don't, no, I, I don't like modern, not modern, I don't like a lot of these Pentecostal people, apostolic people, that don't acknowledge what repentance does. When you repent... Something happens and you're changed. You're not connected with God. You're not full of the Holy Ghost. You're not, you don't have Him on the inside. But you've done something. And God showed you that I approve of your repentance. And I'm going to forgive you of all of your sins. Don't stop there. That's one of the saddest things I've ever seen. I watched old Billy Graham. He's up there and he's got a crusade. And there's thousands and thousands of people in the attendance. And he says, if you want to live for God, come! And they run down there. And they say the sinner's prayer. And they repent of their sins. And some dude pats them on the back, gives them a card to put in their wallet and say, you're saved! Except you're born again of water and of spirit. You can't see the kingdom of God. Why would I want to stop you from all that God has for you? Why would I want to prevent you from having what Mary, the mother of Jesus, needed? 
Why would I want to stop you from having what Peter experienced? That true connection with God where you are literally born again and the old man is literally cast out and the new man begins to live and that new man has God inside and God dwells and moves and that power and the strength and confidence of what, why would I want to stop you? Don't tell me you're a man of God if you tell people you don't need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Well, it's just an ordinance of the church. Really? Well, this is a church of the living God. And that's what God said to do, so... I'm preaching here and I probably shouldn't do that. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves... Holiness is a process of cleansing. Cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Come into church. God saves you, fills you with the Holy Ghost. It starts in here and it begins to move out. If you ain't got no holiness in here, all the outside is just simply a show. But when you start surrendering to God, all of a sudden it begins to morph and change. And we become something that we were not. And God begins to bless us. I'm trying to hurry because I see some of the classes already come in. Holiness is not desiring the unclean. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 5. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us, in other words, you've listened to our teaching, how ye ought to walk and to please God. You don't understand, Pastor. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need your advice. Who told them how to walk and please God? The preachers did. Why? Because God spoke... Who told the children of Israel how to walk and please God? Moses did. How many realize Moses was a man like any other had it not been for the connection of God and the obedience to God and giving himself to God to listen to God? God began to speak through him and he led the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of the filthiness and the type and the shadow of sin and slavery into the freedom of the promised land. Paul's doing the same thing. You received how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. God wants to bless His people. Go, let's go on. Next scripture. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of, the, not in the lust of conspicuousness, or whatever that word is, even as the Gentiles which know not God. When you know God, there is a walk that you develop that brings you into unity with God. And that's called holiness. And as you receive that holiness, you grow more and more in God. Jump with me to 1 Thessalonians 4, no, that's verse 7. Just two scriptures down. For God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Well, holiness is something of the Old Testament. It's not New Testament. Yes, it is New Testament. Holiness, God did not call me to be the average bear. He called me to be a king and a priest. He didn't call you to be just some old pumpkin on a patch. He called you to be the great pumpkin. For those of you that are into pumpkins. He called us not unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given us His Holy Spirit. When a pastor preaches on holiness, you can do one of two things. You can receive it or you can reject it. 
But it's not the preacher that you're rejecting. It's God. Boy, that's good preaching. Amen. Amen. Why does God want you to have holiness in your life? So that you can abound more and more and more. Have you ever got to a place in your walk with God where you hit the ceiling? It's like I can't get any higher. I want to tell you why. It's because you need more holiness in your life. Watch this. Titus chapter 2. I'm trying to hurry. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as it becometh holiness. Watch how you act. Holiness is part of your actions. Now we're going to just act like Sister Savannah and Sister Alyssa are like 90-year-old women. Just because you're old and gray don't mean you need to run your mouth about things that you shouldn't be talking to each other about. <coughs> well, it's just us girls talking amongst ourselves and... <laughs> Well, us guys just chewing the fat, you know, we, we, we really just... Really? So you mean it's good to talk bad about somebody or talk, tell filthy things about somebody and you think it's okay just because... We all need this good teaching, Brother Graham. Me too. We all need this good teaching. You know, there's some conversations you don't need to be part of. Your life will not be less full because you didn't talk about a bunch of filthy trash. You went to school and heard what Bethel Ann did over the weekend. You don't need to listen to that. It fills your mind with junk. You don't need to hear about Tommy pull my finger. It's none of your business. If he wants to live a life of vile disgustingness, you need to turn it off. Because that quenches the spirit of holiness. Garbage in, garbage out. Watch this, let me finish this. Likewise, that, uh, uh, the AIDS women, likewise, that they behave in behavior that becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teaching... Teachers of good things. You old ladies, if you're an old lady in here, raise your hand. If you're over 10 years old. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you need to be a teacher of good things. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Now, you're sitting in the front row. You may never do it again after today. Has anybody ever taught you how to behave <laughs> Did it take? No. <laughs> has anybody ever taught you, Sister Lissa, how to respect the house of God? Sister Savannah, has anybody ever taught you how to walk holy before God? Has anybody ever taught our young... Come on, ladies. You're, it's your job to teach them, not their job to teach you. Amen. Do I have a school teacher in here? Anybody here teach school? Sister, what do you teach? You, you're in school. You, you're a librarian? You ever have to teach kids anything? I mean, what grade are you in? Fifth grade. Next year, I dare you to do something. Go to, go to class, because in sixth grade, they're going to start teaching you algebra. Go tell the teacher how algebra is done. No. Sister Monroe, you got some experiences. Them pretty little girls of yours ain't never had. Brother Monroe, you got some experience. That mean old son of yours ain't never had. It's not, you didn't have them kids to shove them out the door and say, y'all just take care of yourself now. No, but in the church as well. We need some people that's been in, plugged into the Holy Ghost long enough that can look at some people and say, hey, this is what's going to help you. This is what's going to lead you. This is, what's going, this is some wise ways of walking with God. You know, you know it, it is not necessarily just an old person. It might be a young person in age, but they've got some Holy Ghost experience behind them. And they say, hey, you know what? I've seen people go down that road before, and the end of that road is not well. Amen. Titus goes on to say that the men need to do the same thing so you guys didn't get left out. I'm hurrying. Yep, men, it's right there. Titus chapter 6 through 8. Young men likewise exhort, uh, uh, exhort you to be sober-minded in all things. 
Show in thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine. That's what we're preaching on this morning, doctrine. Showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. You need to watch what you say. That in uh, that the um, anyway, I can't read. Romans chapter twelve, verse one. I'm hurrying. Romans twelve and one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Paul said to present your bodies. Look at 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? God is holy. If He's inside of you, you are the holy temple of God. Don't corrupt it. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man, uh, if any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. What's that mean? I'm glad you asked. Somebody want to tell you what you do or don't need to do to serve God, live for God? They need to become a fool and be educated. That's like that, kid, that's like that young man going to go to school next year and teach his teacher how to do algebra. The whole mess of us would be in bad shape. <laughs> Amen? Let him become a fool. Why? So he can be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own conceits. Holiness to the world is stupidity. The world don't get it. You know, the first thing I do, what happens, the first thing all of us do, not just me, you do it too. Preacher gets up and starts preaching holiness, and you're like, weirdo stuff there. And you go to the extreme. And you get over there the snake handling church and, and, and you know, people that don't believe fresh air is, you know, they believe it's a sin and, and you ought not be able to have fun and, you know, walk around and the only thing church people could ever do is eat. You know, you get way out there. Stuff the Bible don't say. Stuff the Bible don't even have a foundation of. And I'll tell you, I, I, in teaching of holiness, there are things of holiness that goes with generational changes and the evolving of society. Years ago, my grandfather wouldn't buy a particular car because it had a radio in it. Because at the time, the way people were using radios and getting messed up on it, he didn't feel like that needed to be in his life. Yet he's the same man that after things changed and society evolved, he started some of the first gospel Pentecostal radio stations, raised the, gave the first $500 for the, the radio broadcast that's still going on with the United Pentecostal Church today. There was times and conditions that I understand why they preach against TV. Now your phone gets more television than a television gets. And all these people that ain't realize that they're still preaching against television, they don't preach against what's on it. They just preach against that machine. The devil's not in a machine. The devil's in here. You need to put him out. Holiness gets rid of him. If I teach you to get holy, you don't, I don't have to tell you not to watch porno on television. If you just get desiring of holiness, they could call it whatever they want to and you'll know it ain't right. It's like when they ask that judge to give a definition of, of pornography. He says, I don't know, but I, when I see it, I know what it is. Okay. I never can tell that joke right. <laughs> What's unholy? Sometimes somebody's got to look at you and say, that's not right. That's not right. Okay, I'm hurrying. Therefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envyings and all evil speaking... As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that ye may grow thereby. 
Whenever we are so full of the Holy Ghost and we need God to change us. That person that came to church and they were so hungry for God, it would not have mattered. <clears throat> There's people like, what's that moron? I, I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Uh, that did all that dancing weird stuff on TV the other night. Molly Spears or something like that. She is so hungry to capture the limelight and the pride of this world and all that kind of stuff. And she would literally sacrifice the goodness that that young girl was at some point in time. And she would throw it all away because she's hungry for it. You see, when you come to God and you're so hungry for God, you'll say all the good, all that stuff of the world, I'll throw it out. I don't need it. I'll put it aside. We need to get back to that childhood hunger for God. It says, God, whatever you ask, I'll do it. Lord, I don't know. You know what it is? It's when we start getting old and we start thinking twice and start bringing stuff in. It is not right to bring in. Amen. Boy, that's such good preaching. And grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted the Lord, tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as, as a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God. The power of God in holiness is like a living stone. It's a rock. And in it is life. It'll protect you it's something you can stand on. It's something you can walk on. Ye also as lively stones are built up in a spiritual house and holy priesthood. How many of you realize when you got the Holy Ghost, you stepped into a holy priesthood? When God came on the inside, you're not an average person. You're not a, a, a everyday run-of-the-mill person. You're not an average Joe. Something of divine proportion happened in you, and you become a holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. When you plug into holiness, I'm going to close on Sister Esther. And there's other stuff, but we ain't going to do that unless we preach on it again. Anybody know who Esther was? Not Sister Vickers. A whole different Esthers. Esther was a fine young thing. An FYT. And it come time that the queen... Somebody tell me what the queen's name was. No. Vashti. She was probably a fine old hag. But she had a fine old hag attitude toward her husband. She became her own person. And the king said, that ain't going to work anymore. Goodbye, Vashti. I need a new honey. I need a new squeeze. I need somebody that will make me happy to be king. So all the fair maidens of the land were brought to the kingdom. And they were 12 months in becoming clean. Six months, basically they didn't do nothing but purify themselves. And getting all of their old stuff out of them. And in six months they didn't do nothing but put on fine spices and oils. And having all of the good stuff put in them. And then they got whatever they asked. And they went unto see the king. And if the king was pleased with them, they went on to the house of the king. It wasn't his wife, but they were protected because they had an experience with the king. And when it come Esther's time, she realized that I'm here for the good. I'm not here for me. I'm not here for what I can get. And she goes and she finds the one that knows the king. Boy, it's good preaching here right now. Y'all hang on every word I'm saying. She goes and finds the one that knows the king better than anybody else. The king's servant. And she asks the, him, What does the king like? 
In other words, he's got his desires. And if I'll get like him, everything will work out just fine. And the Bible says she took nothing but with her but what the king liked. And the Bible says she walked in. The she coon come walking in the room. And the king said, My, my, my. Like that little cartoon. <laughs> For those of you that remember Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> I mean, you know, just I, hey, hey, you, your yeah, eyes go, whoo, man, that's some fine young thing. That's what I like. And immediately he knew, I found her. And the Bible says she was placed into the throne in the place of Vashti, who did not love her husband. You see, when you get in love with Jesus, and you get holiness on the inside, and you get, allow the holiness to work on the outside, what happens when you pass by the throne? You're going to catch somebody's attention, and God's going to go, Aruga! Aruga! And then the request that you have, He's desiring to make it happen. He's desiring to bring it to pass. I'm going to tell you what, don't let the world who ain't got no blessings from God tell you you don't need to live for God holy. Well, all that kind of stuff, that's legalism and all that kind of stuff. You know what? You call it legalism all you want. I call it blessing. Because if I can please God in my attitude, if I can talk right, spit right, shoot straight, do what's right, I can please God, God get pleased with me. Guess what? I'm going to be blessed. Brother Don, you preach about holiness and all that, but you never put your finger on anything. You could be here tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm going to just tell you right now. I'm going to give you a spoiler. I, 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 I didn't have a plan of this. I just It just hit me and I feel it in the Holy Ghost. If you're afraid of good old apostolic teaching on holiness... Don't come tonight. I'm going to tell you who I am. I am the servant of the Most High God. And if you want to know what pleases Him, you're going to be here tonight. If anybody wants to be the Queen of God, if anybody wants to be the Chosen of God, anybody wants to be the Bride of Christ, you ought to be planning to be here tonight and ready to take up that which is given to you by the Word of God. If not, be here next week. We love you and appreciate you. God's going to get a hold of your heart and you'll be, you'll be getting the CD and you're going to fill your eyes and your heart with the good things of God and when you're ready for it. Amen? Hallelujah. Anybody love God today? Anybody love holiness? Why don't you stand to your feet?